Hey guys, it's Geno here. How's everyone doing today? So, for today's video, we're showing you guys the secret new skulls hidden on MCC that were recently added for Halo 3 and ODST. So, as you know, quite a while ago, Halo 1 and MCC got a lot of new skulls that were basically ported over from Halo 2 Anniversary. Well, now the same thing has basically happened with Halo 3 and ODST. Uh, quite a lot of skulls from Halo 2 Anniversary can now be added to Halo 3 and ODST and they will work. Now, they're still hidden in the game files, and that, it was actually found by Lord Zed, uh, who noticed that uh, the skulls are now working on Halo 3 and ODST. So for today's video, we'll be taking a look at each of those skulls and see how they work on Halo 3. Starting with the Anger Skull. This skull makes enemies fire their weapons faster and more frequently. So they basically spam their shots at you, or just you know shoot a lot quicker and a lot more frequently. So here on Halo 3, you can see like the grunts basically spamming the plasma pistol, and even the brute will spam uh, his brute shot at you. And it's basically the same on ODST as well, where well, you know even on easy difficulty, all the enemies just spam their shots at you, <laughs> including the plasma pistol. So that's basically the anger skull. Next up, we have a classic skull from Halo 2, which is the assassin skull. Actually, this was supposed to be like a cut skull in Halo 3 like a long time ago. I remember uh, when Halo 3 first came out, people found references to the Assassin Skull on the 360 version of Halo 3. But basically, the Assassin Skull makes enemies invisible. Now, on Halo 3, that doesn't work as well as Halo 2, since uh, enemies that you know aren't supposed to use active camo, but now have active camo, camo they look weird with active camo. Like, you know, you, you could, they look so like... You could see them really well, and it's just kind of like glitched when you see through them. Uh, even Marines can like use the active camo now too, with the skull on, when you betray them. On some missions. Other missions, I've, it didn't work for me. But yeah, even the Marines look kind of weird uh, with active camo on. Uh, and same with ODST. It, it actually works a little bit better on ODST, I think. Because, I, I don't know, I guess like most of the missions are a little bit darker, so that they don't as they don't quite glow as much as they do in Halo 3, uh, but yeah, it's basically assassins and <laughs> uh, assassin skull. Uh, next up, we have a fan favorite, which is one I've wanted for a while too, and that's the bandana skull. The bandana skull was first introduced in Halo Anniversary on the 360, and was added with Halo 2 Anniversary as well when it came to MCC. But basically, the bandana skull gives you infinite ammo in uh, in campaign. And, well, that's basically all it does, which is a really great skull. It's a really fun skull to use, and it's uh, it really helps with a lot, a lot, of, uh, a lot of missions. Now, obviously, it's a non-scoring skull now, but back in the day, you could use a uh, bandana to finish the game on Legendary, and it would actually count. And, yeah, likewise, it works for ODST just fine as well. Unfortunately, it's not a bottomless clip skull. It's just infinite ammo. You still gotta reload. Next up, we have the Bonded Pair skull. This is actually one that Lord Zed could not verify as working when he uh, noticed these. So we'll be taking a look at it for this video and verifying if it works or not. So Bonded Pair is a co-op only skull where when one player dies, the other player gets a large damage boost that lasts for quite a bit actually. So here my teammate just killed himself and you can see with the spiker, you know a single spiker, it actually shreds apart a brute's armor very quickly and then you know, kills the brute right right away. It's almost a viable, makes the spike like a viable weapon. And of course on ODST, the silenced SMG against like a brute's shields and armors, it just shreds that apart as well, like very quickly. When normally, even on easy difficulty, it wouldn't kill an enemy that easily. So that's what the Bond and Pair skull does, but that's only on co-op. Next up, we have the Eye Patch skull. This skull, makes it so that your auto-aim is disabled. So this is another one that Lord said couldn't verify uh, because in this case, you need a controller on PC to be to, to verify it. And now, you know, we can see here that when I'm looking at enemies, it does not lock onto them. It just, uh, you know, it just, it's almost the same as using the mouse. There's just simply no auto-aim. So this skull does indeed work correctly on both Halo 3 and ODST. Next up we have the Foreign Skull. This one makes it so that you cannot pick up Covenant weapons. You can only pick up um, human weapons. And I assume that when you're playing on co-op as an elite, it's the same thing. You still can't pick up Covenant weapons even as an elite. But as you can see here, 
it doesn't matter like which covenant weapons, brute or elites or grunts, none of them can be picked up at all or swapped for either. And it's the same with ODST. Can't pick up any covenant weapons at all. Luckily, I don't think that actually like breaks gameplay. I think most missions you can get away without using covenant weapons. So yeah, no issues there. Next up, we have the Ghost Skull. This skull makes it so that AIs no longer flinch from attacks. So, you know, when you punch enemies or when you shoot them, they don't get stunned at all. They don't flinch or anything. They just, you know, they just barely react to it at all and they just keep going on uh, with attacking you. So, that makes it a little, uh, little more difficult, actually, which I'm surprised it's a non-scoring skull in this case. Uh, I figured it should at least be like a, like a scoring skull or like a 1x skull. But um, anyways, that's uh, what the uh, Ghost Skull does. Next up, we have the Jacked Skull. This one is a scoring skull, uh, and it basically makes it so that you can't drive vehicles unless you hijack them from an enemy. So you can't even like ask Marines to, or allies to get out of a vehicle. So basically, it makes it impossible to drive. You can only hijack another vehicle in order to drive it, such as this ghost here. Now that basically makes it so that the Warthog run is impossible to play with the skull on. Because, well, you can't drive the Warthog and doing it on foot is very, very difficult. But as some people have proved, it is possible to do the Warthog run on foot. But it's uh, very, very difficult. <laughs> uh, anyways, next up we have the Malfunction Skull. So this one is... It doesn't say it's a co-op skull, but it really kind of only works on co-op. Uh, whenever you die and when you respawn, a part of your a random part of your HUD will, you know, be disabled. Like right now, my motion tracker is disabled, and when I respawn here again, now my ammo counter is disabled. And here on ODST, uh, when I died and respawn, my grenade count is disabled there. So that's kind of a co-op skull. I don't think it works like when reverting checkpoints. Uh, next up, we have the Master Blaster Skull. This was another co-op skull, uh, one that also Lord Zed uh, they couldn't verify working. So let's uh, verify that now. So the Master Blaster Skull, this one makes it so that one player has overshields, but they can only melee, while the other player has no shields, but they have infinite ammo. And after getting a certain number of kills, uh, your roles will switch, where if you had the sh overshields before, then you'll have no shields, but you'll be able to have infinite ammo. So, you can see here, I had the overshields, I had no shields, and then all of a sudden, now I have, uh, it's recharging overshields, but I can no longer shoot. I can still melee, but I can't shoot. And it works the exact same on ODST. Although I feel like on ODST it took a lot more kills for it to happen. But as you can see there, I had overshields, and all of a sudden my stamina just completely, you know, went to like zero. Whereas my partner got, you know, full overshields. Now, even though you can't shoot when you're in the overshield mode, uh, you can actually shoot vehicle weapons and turrets still. So that's kind of a little, uh, little bypass to that. <laughs> Next up, we have the pinata skull. This one is, uh, well, this one's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty common on the other Halo games. But whenever you punch enemies, you get grenades, and that's it. Now it's a little bit different on Halo 3. I know on like Halo 2 and Halo 1 I think when you punch enemies they actually drop grenades. But in Halo 3 and ODST it seems like when you punch enemies it just gives you grenades rather than like physically drop grenades. Next we have the Recession Skull. This skull makes it so that every time you shoot you use basically twice as much ammo as you normally would. So basically your ammo depletes a lot quicker and you can see here with the BR it uh it drains a lot quicker and I have to reload a lot more frequently so basically you might as well have half as much ammo as you normally would and same thing on ODSD works just the same with the assault rifle and pretty much any weapon next up we have the so angry skull this one is a it's kind of a funny one uh, and it's actually surprisingly not a non scoring skull uh, but anyways it makes it so that when brutes get mad when they when they berserk or just you know get angry in general after like a few seconds they they would just explode like a frag grenade explosion and you know it works the same on Halo 3 and ODST both at the little bit will just go boom so yeah that's the so angry skull next up we have the swarm skull this one makes it so that uh, hunters are a lot more dangerous they're a lot stronger now I 
<laughs> this was hard to really tell. I, it, I mean, it looks like they're more aggressive when, when I uh, when I face them with the skull on. It seems like you know that they shoot a lot more, a lot more frequently, and they they charge at me and melee me a lot more. But you know, I, I can't really tell objectively. Is this is one of those like where it, you know, I can say like it seems like they're stronger. But I can't really tell. Health-wise, I don't know. It, it seems about the same. But I, I think it just makes them more aggressive or shoots more frequently. But again, it's hard to tell. Uh, next up, we have the That's Just Wrong skull. This one increases the enemy awareness of players so that you can't really sneak up on them anymore. They uh, li Like the sniping part of the mission, the arc. You know, normally you can just stay on the ledge here and snipe them but once you come here they've already noticed you and will start shooting at you immediately and it's the same with ODST you know when you uh, approach enemies they've pretty much already noticed you and will start coming towards you and charging at you they they're pretty much aware of you no matter what the last skull is the they come back skull this one is only for Halo 3 actually. Uh, technically it probably works ODST, but there's no flood in ODST so it does nothing. But just like the Swarm Skull, um, when enemies are revived or reanimated by the flood infection forms, the, the result of that is these combat forms are a lot more dangerous. Again, I can't really tell, uh, but Lord Zed did verify it as working, so uh, it I guess it does work then, but I can't really tell. Um, but that's just that's what the skull does. But yeah, so those are all the uh, new hidden skulls for Halo 3 and ODST. Uh, they're currently not official, you have to mod them to make them work. But uh, I'll do a separate tutorial for how to do that eventually. But for now, I don't know when 3 for 3 make them official. They haven't even made Acrophobia official yet for Halo 1, 2, and ODST. But anyways, there you guys have it. Hopefully you guys found this video to be interesting. If you did, then as always, make sure to leave a like, uh, leave a thought in the comments, and if you guys want to check out what I'm to, any questions you have about this, just let me know down below. And like I said, I will make a tutorial for this eventually, just for the interest of time. I didn't want to do it for this video because it'd be very long otherwise. But anyways, aside from that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all next time. Bye guys.